Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Catching Up. I'm your host, Lauren Khalil. Today we're catching up with CrossFit Games athlete who also dabbed with bobsled as a member of Team USA's squad. We have Kelsey Keel. Kelsey, how's it going? So great to have you here today. Pretty good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, so we don't just have you today, but we all need to see Please. Oliver because Hold he's on. he's a member of this team too if anybody knows Kelsey she's obsessed with her dog as much as I'm obsessed with my dogs so he's got to make an appearance right off the get-go oh. he's pretty tired he just was <laughs> laying there so I'm sure he'll just fall right oh yeah it looks like he had a long training day today yeah it was a hard day a lot of running <laughs> after the ball <laughs> so how has training been going for you Training has been, man, it has been so fun, honestly. It's like, I don't know if it's just like a change in, in environment, um, kind of having like a home base here, and maybe it's the training partners that I have, but it is the most fun that I've ever had doing CrossFit. Oh, that's so sure. good to hear because... You know, we'll kind of get into it, but you've had so many different transitions from individual bobsled team, <laughs> um, moving all over the place. Do you yeah. finally feel like you're settled into a groove after all of that chaos? Yeah, I do. Um, I know we'll talk about it a little bit, but last year with bobsledding was like, Philly was my home base, but there was mm -hmm. not like more than... 10 to 12 days that I was ever just here. It was, you know, you had to be ready to take a COVID test and get on a flight and get out here and get there and a couple months in Lake Placid and a couple <laughs> weeks in Park City. It was just like a, an amazing experience, but a super overwhelming one. I mean, anyone who's listening, who has traveled a lot for work and that kind of thing, like it's a lot. It's, uh, it's hard to Especially when I'm someone who thrives off of my routine and mm -hmm. my structure, it was it was a <laughs> testing year, but it was, um, you know, it all led me to here, and now I'm I have this home base, and I definitely feel more settled, uh, a little bit more grounded than I felt in a long time, and um, I know Oliver likes to not have to travel around a lot, <laughs> you know. He knows where his toys are. He knows where his bed like, is, the food. He's like, mom won't keep leaving. He hates <laughs> that, you know. So, so let's just go back to 2020, yeah. 2020 yeah. the year that everything really changed for so many of us, but especially you, because back in January of 2020, you qualified for the CrossFit Games as an individual through uh, the sanctional strength and depth after competing yeah. at the games three times on a team. Um, what was this moment like for you to finally punch your ticket as an individual just a couple of years ago? Oh, man. Um, I always like I think back to that to strength and depth. And I think about, um, first of all, I think about my mindset before going there. Um, mm -hmm. they released the workouts and I was just kind of like, <laughs> like there's a 6 K <laughs> run to start the whole competition. And if anyone knows me, you know how much I love running <laughs> longer than like 400 meters. Um, yeah. so it was so funny because I was just kind of like, all right, I'm going to go. I've already, you know, signed up. I'm already got my flights. I'm going to go do my best. Um, and aside from the running event, I, you know, I'm really proud of so many things that happened that weekend that, I mean, that was qualifying as an individual was the, the goal, right? That was like the top of the top for me and it happened. And, you know, looking back, I'm just, that whole competition, that whole weekend was just like, a dream. <laughs> sure. I, I can yeah. only imagine like all of those emotions that you were feeling. And then like, finally the dream was becoming a reality, but shortly after mm -hmm. the games format, it changed and CrossFit, they essentially revoked your invite as well as so many yeah. others. Um, was, was there a point after that, that you thought maybe you would walk away from CrossFit permanently because of everything that happened and maybe just some of those emotions that you were feeling initially? Uh, there, <laughs> everything else aside, there was, 
I was still committed. I was still in, I was still ready um, to put the work in Mm -hmm. that I knew that I needed to put in. And um, I had started working with Justin Kotler. I was really ready to kind of dive headfirst into having an actual coach and, uh, you know, a structure. And I was actually, um, the whole plan was that I had was to leave Boston. I was up in Boston at the time and I was going to move out to Vegas um, because Kotler had moved there with Harry Pierce out there. (laughs) um, That was the plan for me, actually. I had pretty set plans and I had rented a U-Haul and um, it was all all pretty much about to happen. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So that, so you rented the U-Haul, you're packing the boxes, like yeah. you have a place ready in Vegas. At what point did you, er, 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 yeah. like what, what, what was that? It was wild. It was like a wild, it was wild. So I, um, it's so funny because I actually didn't have a place, but I had two weeks oh. okay. to get there. Yeah. I was like, I'll figure You'll it out. figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they won't leave you out to dry. Yeah, You'll hang out with someone, someone for a bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, my lease was up. It was a Friday afternoon. My mom was going to fly in from Philly on Saturday and she was going to help me pack my apartment up. And then Sunday she was going to get in the U-Haul with me and we were going to start the trip out West. Um, and I vividly remember, I can remember like where I was sitting. I decided to sit in on on Invictus Boston, one of their last um, staff meetings that I was gonna be there for. I was just like, I'm just gonna sit here anyway. Um, (laughs) And as I'm sitting there in that meeting, it was like a Friday afternoon, my phone was like buzzing, going crazy. And I'm like, this is weird. Like all my friends are right here. And um, (laughs) so I look at my phone and it was actually um, Kaylee Humphreys, who if we backtrack a couple months, I can tell you about how we got connected, but, after the meeting, I gave her a call and she was like, do you have a place in Vegas yet? And I said, no, but you know, I'm pretty confident I'll find one in the two weeks that I'm driving out there. And, um, she's like, well, uh, because of COVID and everything that was going on, like we actually might have a bed for you at the Olympic training center up in Lake Placid, New York. And I was a little bit shell shocked mostly because it was just kind of like this conversation that we were having about bobsled. It was never like, like something set in stone. It was always just Mm -hmm. kind of like, Oh, if the opportunity arose, like that would be so cool to try to make an Olympic team. (laughs) And I had talked with Justin a lot about it. And the whole plan was that I was going to get out to Vegas, get settled. And Kaylee lived in, lives in California. So I was like, Oh, I could just kind of hop over and train with you a little bit and see what bobsled's all about. Um, but that Friday she said, you know, we recommend you staying on the East coast, you know, I don't know if that's Boston or back home to Philly, but like quarantine rules, if, you know, we can get you this bed, like it might be easier for you to stay or whatever. So I pretty much had a couple hours to freak out and, (laughs) uh, had a lot of conversation with my mom and I had a conversation with one of the bobsled coaches and I had a conversation with Justin and um, I really just like, holy moly, what am I meant to do here? Like, I, yeah. I, it's just, I don't, what is the universe trying to tell me right now? Like what is happening? And um, so I made the decision. My mom still flew up. She still helped me pack my apartment up. And instead we drove my U-Haul down to Philly um, which is home obviously. And I got a storage unit and put all my stuff in storage and just kind of like waited it out to see when I could go up and train with the bobsled team. Oliver's yeah. like, yeah, that was a really crazy time in my life like, too. I hated it. <laughs> you gave me the stress and anxiety too. Literally. <laughs> So, yeah. okay. So, so let's go back a little bit. At what point did you start connecting with the bobsled team? Like, was this on a bucket list or something that you've always kind of wanted to do? Or how did that even like come into the mix? Yeah, no, I um didn't even know what bobsled, like I knew what bobsled was, but I, <laughs> the training for it, yeah, never knew what that was about. Um, The only little like insight, insight into the bobsled world that I had was from following Blaine McConnell. 
Mm -hmm. And um, for anyone who doesn't know, he was a coach at Invictus out in San Diego. I had gone out there with the Invictus team. We'd met. um, And then I kind of like watched his transition to bobsled. Not like super closely. I just kind of like noticed that he did it. Um, And so that was really all that I had known about bobsled and that. So um, I was messaged on Instagram um, by Kaylee Humphreys, who at the time was the number one pilot in the world, um, bobsled pilot. She, her husband reached out to me and was just kind of like, hey, would you ever try bobsled? <laughs> and, so maybe you casually like slid into your DMs and were like, yeah. hey, you're a CrossFitter. Like we think you'd be yeah. good at bobsled. Exactly. And it like, I w- it was cool. kind of like laughable. Like I'm like, I don't even know what that would look like. Yeah. And he's like, well, if you like are willing to chat with my wife, she's like a badass. She's the best in the world, blah, blah. So <laughs> I was like, sure, I'll talk to her. And uh, so Kaylee and I started messaging a little bit back and forth. And it really came down to the fact that I am a bigger athlete, um, more strength biased, um, a little bit more powerful and, um, you know, obviously I, they had no idea if I was going to be good at the sport of bobsled, but like on paper, it, it might translate to being good at it. Um, and there was that like, maybe for so long, like, it, like I said, the plan was to go to Vegas and train with her, you know, sporadically and maybe talk to the coach and see what it would look like. Um, and it was a conversation like throughout the summer, never anything set in stone. And then that Friday was like, Hey, actually let's do this thing. (laughs) Was there something that like specifically tilted everything to the bobsled side when making that decision to like choose the bobsled over CrossFit for the time being? Like, was there one thing? I don't know if there was one thing, but at that time in my life, I like some of the biggest and most amazing experiences of my life have all come from like really hard and scary choices and like kind of like, well, let's just see how this happens and works. And like, (laughs) I feel like some of those times that I've been like, let's just see if this happens or let's see if this can work. I've crashed and burned. But then a lot of times it's also been like amazing life changing experiences. And I remember talking to Justin Kotler about it. Like Mm -hmm. we kept saying like the opportunity to try to make an Olympic team doesn't come around all the time, but like we were like this, hopefully CrossFit's not going to go anywhere. So yeah, I'll be older. But in my mind, I I felt like if I had moved out to Vegas and done the CrossFit thing, I probably would always be like, well, could I have made that Olympic team? Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to like, question that I wanted to be like yeah I made it or no I tried but I you know that kind of thing so I feel like it was those two things of like trusting that this could be like a crash and burn situation but also trusting that CrossFit will be there if I want to go back to it kind of thing Mm -hmm. um all led to that like all right let's give it a shot (laughs) I think it says a lot about you as a person though that for somebody who I mean, most competitive CrossFitters are so set in their routines Mm -hmm. and having consistency from their programming to nutrition to sleeping and all of these things. I think it really says something about you that you could look at these two things and be like, you know, I'm okay without this for now. Let's try something completely different. (laughs) I think that's so cool. Oh, it's terrifying. (laughs) But so what was the experience like overall? What was it like to be training at uh, the Olympic oh, training center and uh, just the difference in training for bobsled versus CrossFit? Yeah. yeah. The actual physical training is so different. I mean, I, I played soccer, but it was so long ago. I had so much <laughs> CrossFit between that. Like I forgot what it was like to train sports specific training. So mm-hmm. it was definitely, I mean, CrossFit, you're just trying to be good at everything Whereas like sports specific, you have to be good at that thing. And that like one thing, granted, it was a lot of things for me, but, (laughs) um, so that was a change. Like really, I mean, my body, I was 
in the best shape that I was ever in, but I also like little muscles, like my adductors and other like little muscles in my legs weren't used to all the sprint work that I was doing that like it was, it took a toll and that was a big change for me. Um, the whole experience of bobsled in general, um, I look back on that year, <laughs> I guess it was longer than a year. Well, no, it was like <laughs> pretty much just a year, but like it was, it was insane. It was both rewarding and painful and I grew and I failed and I suffered and I had fun like all of the things that could have could happen that happened to people in lifetimes I feel like happened to me in a year um but one that I wouldn't change for anything it was I mean I got to meet some of the best athletes in the entire world in what they do and that in in itself was pretty pretty amazing to be able to see what these athletes are doing you know with with their nutrition and their sleep and their training and and mindset work and all of that um i mean you're talking to people who are competing or have or trying to compete at the olympic level which you know is the, the top level and i learned so many lessons both good and bad throughout the that year. But um, again, something I wouldn't trade for anything. What do you think was the most challenging part about bobsled as, as a whole, whether it was, you know, the way that you were training some of the differences, or if it was the community of being in a different sport? I, I don't know. Are there like a couple challenges that were really difficult for you to face? Yeah. Um, just the, the actual physical training itself, um, super different from CrossFit. Like we're take, we're like sprinting 40 meters and then resting to full recovery. So you're resting like five minutes, like, like the training's completely different than CrossFit. So yeah. that took me a little bit to like, be like, okay, Kelsey, you don't need like elevated heart rate for a long period of time to be <laughs> Just a little different. But for me, I, like I said, I played soccer. But I was never on, like, those, like, high-level soccer teams where, like, you learned how to sprint and, like, did sprint mechanic drills and, like, that kind of thing. And bobsled, a lot of successful bobsledders have dabbled or been very successful in the track and field world or mm -hmm. football or um, that kind of thing where you are you know how to sprint and be explosive um, in, like, just knowing those sprint mechanics. So I think – Probably the hardest thing physically for me was going into a brand new sport at 29 and trying to like teach my body to do new, th brand new things that like I didn't know how to do. <laughs> so, which then of course took a toll on like my mental, like why can't I figure this yeah. out? This is so hard. Every training session was so hard for me when I finally got the chance to like train to try to be fast. But, um, yeah, I think that was one of the biggest things physically for me. Mentally, it was like a roller coaster. Um, I think the biggest lesson, I don't know if it's the biggest, but one of the biggest lessons that I take away from that year, honestly, it's from like the first couple months that I was up in Lake Placid. Mm -hmm. um, I was so worried about what I looked like and – what I mean by that is like pushing on the push track. Like I don't want to look like a fool. Like I don't want to like people to laugh at me because I don't know how to do this. Like I'm, I was so worried about looking, being bad at it. And I knew that I was going to be bad at it. And so that was this like hurdle for me that I had to just like try to get over. And I don't think that I got over it. I was pretty just, like in my head, I was super worried about like hitting the right positions that like I almost like got in my own way. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that looking back, that's not like a regret, but that's something that like I wish I could have like noticed quicker um, just because I think that I could have been a better bobsledder. But like I almost was like in my own way, which – I can't fault myself for, I learned the lesson, but, um, that was definitely a hard, a hard one for me.
Do you think it was difficult coming in as an athlete who, I mean, you have experience as a CrossFitter, you have experience in so many different modalities, but being a CrossFitter who's never done bobsled before, now you're with a group of people who are like, hey, we've been doing bobsled for X amount of years. And then this CrossFitter walks in, like, was there that kind of vibe? Um, it's so funny because now when I think about all those people that I met, I just like have nothing but like love <laughs> and like, it was just great. But that first couple of those first couple of weeks, it's not a CrossFit gym. Like it's not, <laughs> it's not the community feel of CrossFit. Oh, that's what I was different. wondering. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, I mean, welcome to our sport. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. No. Like I, and what I didn't, maybe I didn't totally realize then that like definitely realized as I went through it was, you know, the, on the women's team, they don't have four man. So if people have watched the Olympics, you've seen the four man, the men's team go with, with mm-hmm. a driver mm-hmm. and three, three guys in the sled um, with him on the women's side, they have two man and they have mono Bob and you have to be a driver to be able to do mono Bob. So I'm coming in as a new girl, like, didn't really realize it then, but I didn't do like the combine. I didn't do like a rookie Mm -hmm. camp. Like we were just kind of thrown right into pretty much like the existing team's season, Um, which I'm grateful for. You know, it was an amazing experience, but I realize now like these other break women are, are watching me and Colleen Foch, who also was in the almost exact same position as me, like watching these chicks come in like okay you guys are like these newbies we don't we don't want you to push faster than us so like whatever like it was so and you're talking like hundreds of seconds that Mm. people are separated by like it is a little bit more cutthroat like if you think about it you're trying to win medals at the olympics and you have to be that way which is different than crossfit one of the things i think one of the biggest takeaways for me, which is kind of why I'm back in the space that I am, is I felt like training for bobsled, it was so results driven, which they, again, they have to be. It's you're training to try to get a medal at the highest of the highest competition. And whereas with CrossFit, you are putting in the work every day to put in the work every day. And it's, mm-hmm. I, I, I'll just keep saying it. My, one of my favorite quotes lately is that the process is the reward because I'm not over here busting my ass on the assault runner every Monday morning <laughs> because I'm like, I'm going to beat Tia. <laughs> like I'm doing yeah. it because I know that I need to get better at running. And it's almost like me beating myself and that process is really what what it's all about as opposed to trying to push a hundredth faster than my friend (laughs) I don't know so that was like a big kind of mental shift as well was there a moment where you knew okay I'm I'm done with bobsled I want to go back to CrossFit um Am I frozen or can you see me? So nope, I can still see. Oh, you. good. My screen is frozen, <laughs> so I'm just gonna roll with it. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the way that the bobsled season was going into Olympic year was, which is this past year, mm-hmm. that um, this past July, what they have up in Lake Placid, New York, is called Push Championships, where all of the push athletes go up to Lake Placid. Um, the ones who are currently on the team, but also other people can come out, meaning like prior Olympians who still feel great can come out and be like, Hey, I'm going to give it a shot again, which the, a few did. Um, Cause why not? And it's just like, yeah, might, might as well. Um, and so you get up there and you push as fast as you can and you get ranked based off of your push times. And I, you know, I knew some of the ladies that were going to be up there and I knew some of the people who were going to potentially be coming out of retirement to be 
at Push Champs. And I kind of, you know, I had put in about three months worth of, of sprint training with a coach here in Philly. And I just, you know, I'm going up against Lolo Jones, like <laughs> Lauren Gibbs, these, these women who are, have been doing it for a while, who have extensive track and field backgrounds. And I went up for push champs, just like, I'm going to give it my all. I really don't want to get dead last. So I'm going to try to not be last and <laughs> I want to have fun with it. And that's what I did. Honestly, that was some of the most fun that I've had pushing some of the most fun I've had with, um, the other members of team USA. It was just, it was a good experience, but I kind of knew then that I, I just knew that I wasn't going to make the Olympic team. That was kind of like, I, I just had this gut feeling and I didn't get last, which was great. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, pretty much I was just like, yeah, okay. Um, but I, yeah, I was kind of ready to walk away at that point. I was invited up what they do after singles push champs is you go up for combos. So you push with a pilot get ranked off of those times, that kind of thing. And I just felt in my heart, I was just ready to not do that. <laughs> and, um, but it's funny cause I didn't know if I was going to, like, I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I knew that I missed CrossFit and I knew that I missed that kind of training. Um, but life is, is interesting because I had, you know, my September and October were, some pretty tough months for me, um, just, you know, with life stuff. And it wasn't until mid to late October that I was like, okay, I think I, I do want to do CrossFit. And, um, I spoke with Joey Tortora at open box and, uh, decided to hire his coach L through brute strength. Um, I could have gone back to Justin. I, Justin is one of my favorite humans on this planet. Um, he was yeah, willing he's a great to. Guy. He's Everybody just, loves him. <laughs> he's just the best. I miss him. Um, but I, in my heart, I know the kind of athlete that I am. And I didn't want to just go into the gym every single day training by myself. Um, yeah. And some people prefer that and some people thrive off of that. I just know being a team athlete for so long, I thrive off of having a training partner, even if we're just kind of doing similar things or mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So I, that's why I knew if I could train with Joey and have the same coach that like some of our training could link up, then I feel like that's kind of priceless, honestly. So I started working with L. I think my first week with him was the first week of November. Um, this past November. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know. So yeah, then the rest is history. Here I am today. <laughs> it's so funny because, you know, you left bobsled for anybody who follows you on social media. And again, it's just like such a small percentage of what your real life is actually like. Yeah. But from the outsider looking in, it was interesting <clears throat> because like, I'd see you start to post like some CrossFit things. And yeah. I was like, huh, Ooh. like Kelsey's posting more CrossFit things. And then like, it was just like more and more and more. And I'm like, okay, this bitch is about to be competitive again. Like, <laughs> what is she doing? What is going on in her mind? Like, so I funny. need to know, like, at what yeah. point did you decide I want to be competitive? And was it a tough decision to decide whether you wanted to give a run at individual mm -hmm. or you knew, Hey, I want, I want to do team again because I like that training environment. Yeah. That's a good question because, um, it's so funny when I, you know, was settled and I finally was settled in Philadelphia again. Um, I had done like a photo shoot at open box. The gym is beautiful, like super <laughs> nice in there. They have an assault runner. They have like things like the toys oh, that I would need. Yeah. And, so I was like, okay, I can, I can go to open box. So I walk, walked in there, um, towards the end of the summer. And this was, um, well before I decided to hire Elle and all of that. And I walk in and like, I remember I'm like walking towards the dumbbells and I hear Kelsey Keel and it's Joey. And he's like, he comes up to me <laughs> like, how are you doing? What's your plan for the season? <laughs> like <laughs> immediately. Wait, your first day in the gym? Yeah. My first day. 
uh which is hilarious Casual. but yeah <laughs> just like what's your favorite season and I've like had a wrist issue and it was really bad then and obviously just things in life just weren't aligning where I was just like I need to have fun with this again and I need mm-hmm. to make sure my wrist is healthy and all of this and so then it wasn't until like I said I started training with Joey again late October early November that I was like do you want to do you want to try to do this and he's like yeah let's do it <laughs> and honestly we pushed it until like a week before that um cut off day where you needed to like have your Lift. team set <laughs> yeah 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 so you're making all of these doing. decisions very close to like from moving to like, do I want to do bobsled, crossfit? Oh, now a team. Well, we got to find people. How did the rest of the team develop? Like, was the rest of the crew thinking about it? And then you kind of just like, uh, authentically meshed? (laughs) Well, Joey had talked with Nick prior. Nick, um, owns a gym in Philadelphia. So he's kind of around here as well. Um, And then we needed another girl, obviously. And I kind of like put my recruiting hat on. I'm like, all right, who are we going to (laughs) get? And I reached out to Ashley. She was my first, the first girl I reached out to. And honestly, I thought she was going to be like a, like an, nah, I can't do that. Like an immediate. And Mm -hmm. I talked to her and I called her and we were chatting for a little bit. She's like, she like has a boyfriend up in Boston. Or she like lived right outside of Boston, and I had trained with her when I lived in Boston a few times. It's kind of funny because she took my place on the team for a competition. It just everything's come full circle. But weird. Uh, wow, I love stories <laughs> like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and she's like, "Yeah, let me talk to Dylan. Like, I'll get back to you by the end of the weekend." And I'm like, "Okay." And at that point, I'm like, "She's gonna talk to him. He's gonna be like, you're crazy. You're not moving to Philadelphia." <laughs> And so I like reached out to a few other people and then Ashley called me and she's like, yeah, let's do it. (laughs) And she is just like, she's 23. She is a spitfire. She's just like, me and the guys are all in our thirties. So we feel like she's just (laughs) bringing the youth to the team. And in all honesty, I, Joey and I actually kept talking about it. We just kept saying like, Hey, if a team comes together, it comes together and it'll be amazing. Yeah. If it doesn't, then let's just try the individual thing. We'll just, we'll keep pushing each other. Like that was what we decided. Sure. Um, and I just kept believing like, if it's meant to work out, it's going to work out. And I, like I said at the beginning, I'm, I've never had this much fun doing CrossFit. I feel like it just feels so good. It's just different. <laughs> That is so refreshing because, you know, you've been through all of this, what seems like a two and a half year journey of (laughs) ups and downs and moving and different sports. And now you finally have the next goal in sight. Mm, We're on the heels of the quarterfinals, which really kind of starts the season. We already had the open, but this is the first time that, you know, we get to see the rest of your team on a leaderboard. How has training been going with the rest of the crew? Man, it is so fun. (laughs) Uh, We probably fool around more than we should. Just like (laughs) talk shit and dance and Ashley says inappropriate things. And it's great. Um, But honestly, like, yeah, it's the best. We getting on like the worm and getting on our synchro stuff. I was I don't know if I was actually surprised because I knew how fit they were, but we just figured it out. And like, I I don't know. It's, it's refreshing because we're doing these workouts that are so hard and yet there's no like, hurry up, you you suck. Or like something like that. It is, everything (laughs) has been super supportive and, um, I don't know. Again, it's just different. Like we just enjoy each other's company and we enjoy pushing each other and communicating. And I'm just excited. I'm, I'm just, I'm so excited. (laughs) What can we expect to see from your team this season, Kelsey? You know, 
<laughs> part, of, <laughs> part of it wants to say we just want to take it one step at a time. We want to get through quarterfinals, get through semifinals. But really, like, we want to – we want – to really make a run for it. And we want teams to look at us at an event and be like, damn, they're going to do well at this event or something like that. We're not trying to go to the CrossFit Games to just, you know, get a participation. Yeah, yeah, just to go. Like we <laughs> want to go and like make some, make some noise. So that's our goal. <laughs> Kelsey, that's amazing. I cannot wait to see what you and the rest of your team do. As a fan, I'm so excited to see you back in the CrossFit space. And I hope to see you at the CrossFit Games. Yay, thank you. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Oliver I said hello. We even have um, a visitor. She's she's saying hello. Yeah, oh, oh yeah. Oh, yes, with the paw. <laughs> <laughs> the paw. Yes. <laughs> Kelsey, thanks again for catching yeah, up. It was so you. great to, to chat about everything, and it's so good to see you doing well. Thanks.